All right, and we're back here with another WandaVision review. Season 1, Episode 7, Breaking the Fourth Wall, literally and figuratively on this episode. Joining me as always, the Doc, Chris Mueller himself, at BR underscore Doctor on the Twitter machine. Chris, what's going on, dude? Not much. This is uh, this is an exciting one to talk about. We have a lot to get to here today, and it's amazing how much they can pack into just a 38-minute episode. In reality, it's only really around 30 minutes, because the credits, as we were discussing before we went live here a second ago, are like an hour long. So really, it's like a half an hour episode. Um, but they packed a lot into this one, and this is not the penultimate episode. we still got two more to go, but there was a lot of reveals we got to get to. Um, but Phil, you're joining us as well, as always, at PhilDL616 on the Twitter machine. What's going on, Phil? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. But before we go any further with this show, real quickly, I got to get you guys' thoughts. Chris, I know you saw because I saw you tweet about it. I can't get enough Randall Park. I saw him on the Young Rock show this past week, and I thought that was yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was great. He <laughs> literally was playing himself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, in like a talk show or something. And so when I saw you tweet that, I was going to watch the show anyway, but then when I saw you tweet that a day or two ago, I'm like, well, now I have to watch it. Randall Park is on it. So, And I thought you meant just for like a quick cameo in the beginning. He was in the entire episode, essentially. He's interviewing The Rock, and it sounds like he's going to be on every episode going forward. Yeah, I don't know if that's the, supposed to be the format going forward. Is The Rock, like, reminiscing about stuff? It would kind of make sense. But if that yeah. is the case, it would be awesome if Randall was there every time. I really hope so, because he's been great on this show. He's been my favorite part of WandaVision, and the show is great, but I just love Randall Park. And it's amazing how we were just talking about how uh, how great this guy is in the last couple of reviews, and now he's popping up here. He was in, obviously, WandaVision, but he's in Young Rock, too, and I didn't know that... Um. I didn't even know he was announced for the show. I heard nothing about that until I saw you tweet that, so I thought it was cool. Uh, did you catch that show at all, Phil, or no? No, I didn't see it. No, I, it's it's worth watching for Randall Park alone. <laughs> he makes it he makes it worthwhile. Um, but it was all right. But yeah, he was on this episode, of course, as always for Wandavision episode seven. Uh, I don't even know where we begin here. We get some answers, and I like how they even address the fact that we were going to get no answers when the kids asked Wanda, hey, Mom, you're supposed to have all the answers, and she said she has absolutely none. But I feel like we did get a few here, specifically who's been behind all the madness uh, since the beginning, that being the big reveal of, we'll get right into it, Agatha Harkness, which we've talked quite a bit about in the last couple of reviews here. Um, Phil, I'll start with you. What were your thoughts on the big reveal of it being Agatha all along, one of the greatest musical numbers I've ever heard in the MCU at the very, <laughs> en at the very end there? What were your thoughts on the big reveal? I thought it was crazy because um, it seemed like this was the first episode where Ag Agatha was basically controlling the NTV show TV show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was just me that thought that, but it seemed like this was the first time like she was controlling it. Yeah, and I wondered like could she do that all along? And it was all along. I mean, it said it in the in the title sequence for her little uh, short there at the end. So it would, it would, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of stuff there to pick out. Like, I mean, <laughs> of course, like the fact that she's behind Pietro being there mm -hmm. and then that automatically raises the question, like, how did she do that? Yeah, exactly. So when we saw that scene, they, they, they threw a lot at us in the span of like 30 seconds when um, Wanda went downstairs to Agnes's, Agnes, Agnes's house, excuse me, Agatha, whatever, Agnes's house, and she saw like this not a shrine. It's hard to explain. And I've seen a lot of speculation. And it, it, it's gotten to the point now where I'm so excited to see what's going to happen next, where I usually turn to you guys for answers when we talk here every Friday. But now I just kind of go online and look for other theories before I even talk to you guys, because I just, I have, I had to process it. And um, people were bringing up the Mephisto thing, which I thought we were kind of moving away from based off the feel of the show early on. But it looks like we might actually be going back to it after some teases and the talk of the devil in the first few episodes. Could that be what this was? Uh, Chris, what were your thoughts on the Agatha reveal, and are we moving towards that Mephisto route? I mean, I think at this point, it was like so many people had predicted the Agatha thing that I almost didn't want it to be that. Mm -hmm. I want something like more shocking, but the way they did it was interesting, and I mean... As soon as she started walking down to the basement, you knew something crazy was going on. And then when you see that, like, Stranger Things upside down stuff coming out of her, you know, special little room she has in her basement. Yeah. Like, things just started to get real creepy. And, you know, you don't hear the kids answer her back. So, obviously, you got to wonder what happened to the kids. But the whole thing with Pietro, like, 
showing up in the mid credit scene looking totally different and like I'm wondering if did she just take somebody and change their face which makes even less sense because she, why wouldn't she use the face of her actual brother but the the commercial that they used this week is what really got me interesting because it was for the pill Nexus mm-hmm. and the term Nexus in Marvel tends to refer to the nexus of all realities where like basically every alternate reality meets that's my that was my question for you guys because i saw that commercial and obviously being the wrestling mark that i am i think of the nexus group but i'm thinking like what does this actually have to do with you know the mcu because i'm I'm not as well versed as you guys as far as like the nexus and i had looked it up right after the fact because i was a little confused i was expecting a wade barrett picture but i did it said exactly what you just said chris about the whole multiverse thing so it seemed like we were already moving in that direction but it looked like we weren't last week when Pietro wasn't what we thought he was and that we that he's the Quicksilver from the Fox universe. It doesn't look like they're going to do that, but they're still teasing the multiverse. What's the end game here? Do you think that's still the Quicksilver from the, Fo- from the Fox universe and that's what she's using here? It looks like he's just kind of like a minion because the way that, that they shot that scene where he opened the door and Wanda, uh, Wanda opened the door and she saw him, uh, she was using her magic on him. So it's not like he was Mephisto or something. It sounds like he's just uh, just a pawn in her plan. Like, what 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 role does he play in all of this? Do you think at this point? I mean, that's kind of kind of what it seems like, right? He's he's just doing her bidding because she has control of him. Is Who it, it is, actually is? I have yeah. no no clue. I mean, it could be any of the possibilities we've thrown out, but I have yeah. no idea. Do you think it's still Pietro or probably someone else entirely just disguised as a Pietro? I don't know, and I don't know what I want it to be, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'll just take whatever they give me and be satisfied with it because I know they're going to do right by it. Um but yeah, so do you think she is the big bad they've been kind of hinting at this entire time? Because we kind of knew from the get-go there was something else controlling Wanda. Um, she was the only one that kind of went along with the show, like that scene an episode or two ago when she was like, oh, do you want to run it back again? Blah, blah, blah. Is it what we've been speculating in that we, that Wanda may have made a deal with Agnes to give us this reality? Like, why does Wanda, she's aware that something is going on here, but she's obviously not aware that she's Agatha Harkness. So what do you think Wanda's awareness in all of this is? Uh... I, you know, from the beginning, I thought, like, she's been either helping or enabling um, Wanda. Mm -hmm. And this episode seems to kind of confirm that she's been enabling her, but Wanda didn't quite know why she was enabling her. And it almost feels like she was distracting her and trying to go, nope, don't pay any attention to anything over here. Just stay here. Like, you (laughs) you don't need to go anywhere. Like, you don't pay any attention to that over there. So every time something happened, it seemed like she would create this big, distraction and that's what it seemed like quicksilver was it was like oh no they're having a conversation we better do something hey here here's quicksilver (laughs) (laughs) um um but the thing that i noticed i don't know if you guys noticed this but when she was walking down into the basement it was eerily similar to tony walking down in the basement in age of ultron like like just the way it was shot looked very similar the way she stood there and even like her trancing wand at the end of it is it's all very similar. It's funny you bring that up and I'm going to keep going back to this Phil because after you mentioned it, I don't know, after we talked after episode three or two or whatever it was, it was a while ago when you mentioned Ultron, I can't get that out of my head because again, they mentioned him on this episode. So, I mean, there's got to be a reason why they keep bringing up Ultron. I know he, I know they mentioned him in the context of Darcy explaining division how he died, how he died twice, blah, blah, blah. But, like, for example, when they were talking about Thanos, they didn't mention Thanos by name, but they specifically mentioned Ultron. So it's not yes. like they just said, you know, the AI of, uh, of of another bad guy or whatever. Like, they specifically name-dropped Ultron, and that has got to be at least the third or fourth time they've done that on the show so far. Is there more there? Just The only reason... I, I don't know if they're going to be bringing him back just because he doesn't fit the theme that they might be going for. If you know Agatha's a witch, I don't know. Do you still do you still see that happening at some point, Phil, or is that just a, a wild theory at this point? It was a wild theory at one point, but every time I think about it, it makes a lot of sense for Ultron to eventually come back. And even if it's not here, I do think he's coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're plant, planting the seeds for him to come back. Um, 
there was something in the Darcy and Ultron, con- I mean, not Ultron, but Vision conversation mm-hmm. that made me think about it again, too, where I, when he was like, well, what am I now? And I was like, hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah, good point, yeah. And they, they, <laughs> they explained, too, that when he left the Hex, or Darcy, I feel like she's the one character on the show that... I mean, like, she's exactly what we're all thinking in terms of, like, watching the show a couple of episodes ago and then asking, oh, they recast the Pietro, which is what we were all thinking when we saw that a few episodes ago. And then she asked on this episode um, with Ultron, or with um, with Vision, she said, oh, why did you why did you die when you left the Hex? Or why, why can't you leave the Hex, but everyone else can? And obviously that wasn't answered yet. It hasn't been answered yet. But it's a good question. I'm not. I mean, obviously he's probably dead in in reality. That might be why. But I feel like that's too simple of an answer, and they would have just come to terms with that if that was the case. Um, so yeah, I don't know who who would have known though. Two years ago, when the show was announced, when Endgame came out, that required viewing for this show would be Age of Ultron. I mean, people shit on that movie all the time as one of the more forgettable ones, but I feel like you kind of have to watch Ultron, not to fully appreciate the show, but between the Ultron stuff and Wanda and and Pietro's backstory, I feel like that's almost required viewing when it comes to this show, and I know you actually rewatched it recently, Phil. Yeah, I mean, they show it at the end of every episode, you might want to watch Age of Ultron. (laughs) Yeah, I mean it's it's weird, but uh, it's cool at the same time that one of the one of the more underappreciated movies is coming back in a big way. Um, but yeah, again, there's there's just so much to get to. So we see Pietro come back at the very end of this episode. And one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys before I saw him in the mid credit scene uh, was where he was because I think the last that we saw him on the last episode was Wanda just pushing him into like the hay or whatever, right? The Halloween fest, right? Yeah. Okay, so she didn't actually push him out of the universe or whatever. So he wasn't on this episode. The kids asked, who is he if he's not her uncle? And she couldn't explain it because obviously she doesn't know either. Um, but the whole mid credit scene had to do with Monica going to the house that Wanda walked in with Agnes. She was going after her. And then that was when Pietro showed up, and when Monica turned around, she had the purple eyes, which indicated, which again, I'm, I'm still trying to figure all of this out, that she's under the spell of Agnes too, like Wanda. Is that correct? The who? Uh, the, like the spell of Agnes, that's why she had the purple eyes. I know she had the blue eyes, which we'll get to in a second. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that seemed like, or Pietro has an extension of her magic and did something. I don't know. Okay. That's what I was wondering. So they show all of that, but let's get to Monica here too. You guys can probably elaborate on this. We saw her actually show her full powers at this point. Um, as, uh, what was her name again? I not, not, I'm thinking phantom for some reason. Um, God, what, what? she said a, she said a few names, but yeah. spectrum, 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 photon, She's technically went by Captain Marvel for a while. I mean, it's it seems like Spectrum is probably the one they're going to go with. Mm-hmm. Her that, mother's that, name was Photon, right? Like her code name was Photon. Yeah, right? that's that's exactly that's sort of why I feel like she'll have Spectrum as her own name. Right. Did she have blue eyes in the comic too? Was that what indicated that that she's that character that she's Photon? No, that's kind of a new, like, MCU thing oh. from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, like, she's had glowing eyes, but, like, just the way they stylized it, it seems like an MCU thing. Yeah. What were you guys' thoughts on that and how Monica came across in this episode? I mean, the fact that everybody was speculating about some aerospace engineer and it ends up being a nothing reveal <laughs> kind of shocked a lot of people because it's like, oh it's just one of her army friends from sword and the name of that of the girl she was talking to at the little like compound that she went to to pick up that vehicle yeah uh like i looked that up that might have been a reference to an illustrator who's worked at marvel before but other than that it doesn't seem like it's connected to anything (laughs) so yeah i I don't know if that was just everybody reading too much into everything or if they intentionally did that so we weren't thinking about everything else. I don't know. But, yeah, I loved what they did with Monica in this one because it seemed like when she went through the hex this time, she obviously maintained all her memories and stuff. And I'm almost wondering if we saw the the first little taste of her 
being able to transform into different either spectrums of light or energies and that's how she was able to pass through the barrier was that why she was able to pass through the first time too no it seems like the first time and the second time may be what they're saying changed her into what she is now because i'm starting to think she didn't have powers before this i know we were speculating like was she just throwing people off her trail but it, it seems to me like she was slightly surprised at everything like when she popped through the wall and you could all of a sudden see her seeing like all the visible spectrums of light Mm -hmm. it seemed like that was something that she didn't expect so I'm, i'm starting to think that this is her origin story in addition to being wanda's story I, the engineer thing intrigued me as well. I was actually curious if that was actually who they were referring to because, like you said, they made they didn't make it out to be a big deal, but I feel like with stuff like this, where we look into it, like with the engineer stuff, you think it would be just considering Marvel's track record. Um, like, th- like that scene from Ant-Man, or I think it was Civil War, or I think it was Ant-Man in Civil War, when um, Ant-Man's friend, I forgot his name, but he's like, oh, I know a guy. And then... Um, uh, God, what's his name? Falcon said the same thing. Goes, oh, I know a guy, and obviously he was referring to Ant Man. So it was like one of those things. I don't know if they said that exact same way in the episode last week, but I don't know. Just the way that she said it made it seem like it would be a big deal. So the fact that it wasn't it was a little weird. Um, I don't know if they'll go back to that. Probably not. Um, but one thing from that conversation that she had with her friend that they met up with, that's supposed to be the engineer, I guess was that the woman said something about loyalty, and then Monica's reaction was, like, a little weird. Um, She kind of looked, like, taken aback by what she said, and then they moved on. It was, like, a really quick blink-and-you-miss-it thing. Um, That obviously had to hint at something with Captain Marvel, right, that we've heard a lot about so far in the show? Well, it seemed to me like... Like, they were telling her, like, yes, we were loyal to your mother, and that's why we are loyal to you. Mm Mm-hmm. I think maybe her level of surprise was just that so many people were willing to go against orders to help her out on something that may not even work. And obviously didn't work. That truck didn't do jack shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Got turned into half a minivan. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, that definitely was the funny part of it. Not not having any connection to any Marvel character as engineer. And then then the truck just didn't work at all. Like, it just... (laughs) Um, but one of the cool things I noticed when she went through and she had on what looked like a spacesuit and like she started shifting like and and like there were those like different spectrums of her I was like man this looks a lot like Fantastic Four like that couldn't have been that could that, that had to be intentional right I mean it definitely are you talking about one of the movies this look, or, it looks uh, like their origin. Like it looks like Fantastic Four's origin. For like sure. when they get when they get bombarded by all the space rays that give them their powers. Yeah, right. I could see why you'd say that. I had the subtitles turned on for that actually, so it was kind of cool to see because I couldn't hear exactly what she was hearing. So I turned the subtitles on, and it was like a few little conversations from Captain Marvel and you can hear the young actress who played her before talking and Fury and her mom. Oh, wow. And it seemed like the line that finally pushed her to like push through was Captain Marvel saying like, oh, when they were handing out daughters, your mom got the best one or something like that. And then she sort of like her face got serious and she pushed through at the end. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it seems like they want to do something with the Fantastic Four, and I also think that we want them to do something with the Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. so we keep seeing references. Like, yeah. everybody's like, it's going to be Reed Richards, it's going to be Reed Richards, and then it just ends up being nobody. I, I think <laughs> I think our hopes, that's what this show does, too. It's like, you start to theorize about everything, and then you start to hope certain things happen, and then when they don't, you're just like, oh, all right. <laughs> I feel like this... Yeah, but, okay, yeah. go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, I think everybody wanted to be certain things. I was just saying, like, wave-wise, like, when she went through, I was like, boy, that just looks like the Fantastic Four's origin. Like, even her being in a spacesuit and everything, it just looks similar. Um, and mm-hmm. that could be just nothing. It should be just, like, you know, it, you know, looking stylistic, sim- stylistically similar to 
other origins we've seen. It, it probably is nothing. Um, but I did definitely notice when she took off the spacesuit, like her, like her shirt and everything looks like her current um, costume in the mo- in the comics. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's sort of the, the way it comes up to a point on the shirt and just the color scheme of it. Yeah, it looks very similar. Yeah. I loved that scene when she goes into Wanda's house and then Wanda like picks her up and throws her to the ground and you just see this blue energy come off her and Wanda looks shocked like, what the hell are you now? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That, that, and, but the, it's so crazy how Monica is taking all this in stride and just keeps moving forward. She's like, all right, I can see other spectrums of light and clearly have some kind of invulnerability, but we're just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> She's not taking a beat to recognize that anything has changed about her at all. And I think that's good because it shows like how driven she is to complete her mission and help Wanda. She's so much more worried about what's happening to Wanda than her. Yeah, her character arc in the show has been great, too, because she kind of came across obviously afraid of Wanda when she got... Uh, thrown out of the bubble the hex the first time, but this time around, she knows Wanda's not going to hurt her, so she's like, go ahead, like, do something. I mean, and then she won't do shit, because obviously she's not going to hurt her. Uh, what do you guys think by, uh, kind of speaking of that same conversation, what do you guys think that Wanda meant when she said, what do you think she meant by when she said that she was already the villain? Maybe she already is the villain. Is that maybe hinting at something for the Doctor Strange movie, where people are speculating that she could be kind of like the bad guy, so to speak, of that film coming up? Uh, I I just think she is used to being the screw up. I mean, I, I think she blamed herself for some of the stuff with Ultron. I think she blamed herself, of, obviously, for what happened in uh, La- uh, Lagos. Mm-hmm. And it's it, I think she just blames herself for a lot of things. I mean, having to basically kill Vision, like mm-hmm. I don't think she's over that too. I think she just sees herself as a bad person. What about you, Chris? Uh, I, I agree with Phil. It's She's been vilified before by people, and she clearly has a little bit of internal self-hate because of these things that she's done, even if they weren't her fault or intentional or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, it seems like... I don't think she wants to be a villain. And, frankly, I almost think that that line is actually a confirmation of the opposite. I don't think she will become a villain. I think now that they've established that Agatha is clearly the one screwing with everything, I think Wanda will probably end up being either heroic in the end or at least not evil. And then I think that'll lead into her like going to Doctor Strange for help to control herself or something. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, this was the first episode we've seen her not in control of everything. Yeah. And I, you could see like her like kind of breaking down and not wanting to deal with anything because she just couldn't do anything. Like she didn't know what to do. She didn't have any answers. And like that, that's been jarring because from first episode, she's been in full control of everything. Yeah. and I, 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 heard, I heard somebody speculate like, was she losing control over things because she expanded the barrier and it's too big for her to manage now? Or was she losing control over things because Agnes wanted her to start to mentally deteriorate a little bit? Like, it seems like all of this is playing into Agnes's plan in some way. And that's the other thing I want to talk about is like, you know, those kids are gone, man. Did Mephisto take his soul back? And like in the comics, she uses two pieces of Mephisto's soul to create the kids, and then he reabsorbs them. It's like, did they already kill off those kids? <laughs> I mean, hey, I, they, uh, they killed off Sparky, we'll so nothing's again. off limits. I, yeah, I doubt it, but I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, I, I think we'll see them again at some point. Um, I, I think they've been too much a part of the last few episodes to just completely write them off off screen. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it, there's so many things. Like I, I do agree. I think some of it is part of her plan because if you remember, like the reason she expanded the the uh, hex to begin with is because Agatha basically um, 
coast um coaxed uh vision into leaving the hex yeah um which i mean i now fully believe she was sitting out there at that stop sign very intentionally waiting for him to come oh definitely yeah oh yeah yeah i think they showed that i think when during her big reveal video or whatever they showed her like looking in the mirror or whatever to make it look like she was under the spell or or whatever it was before he showed up so um i think that's what they were hinting at there with uh with that, but yeah, no, I'm interested to see how much of a, I don't know, because this is clearly Wanda's Westview, but she's kind of pulling the strings a little bit for things to kind of go the way that she wants them to, so uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see where they go with that, and they showed that it, that she did indeed kill Sparky, but why would she kill Sparky, though? They never actually explained that. Uh, she's bad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that, was, that was funny, just the delivery Catherine Hahn gave of that line and then the evil cackle. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just think it was everything. I, I think she was trying to see, you know, how I, my guess is to test Wanda's powers. Cause you know that she was trying to see if she would bring the dog back to life to yep. see, you know, can you, can you do that? Mm-hmm. And that's why I was thinking that episode. Like, I think this is confirmation that she can't. Because I think if she could, I don't think she would have made an excuse to be like, well, I just, I can't do it. You can't bring anybody back if, you know, you can't just run away from your problems. And I was like, yeah, but you've been running away from your problems the whole series. Why is this one thing, the one thing you're saying, oh, we can't, we can't do anything about this. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was very hypocritical of her in like a way that seemed like they were pointing at it being like, yeah, she She's clearly referencing something that she's doing, but there there wasn't really much of a payoff to it. I don't know. Yeah, I just I think that confirmed for me that she cannot bring anybody back from the dead. And I mean, that should have been our first clue that she didn't bring Pietro back. Mm-hmm. And I, I just still think that's our I think that is our smoking gun that Vision is dead. I mean, even even when they were talking in the truck, Vision and uh and Darcy, it seemed like he kind of he it washed over him that he knew because he just sat there quiet for a second. Yeah. Yeah. No, Vision's role on this episode was interesting because clearly he and Darcy were trying to leave the hex, obviously, and he knows that Wanda's controlling it to ensure that he doesn't leave. But unlike Darcy, because Darcy was doing the whole they were breaking the fourth wall with her, and that she was talking to the camera a lot, like Wanda, a lot like Agnes, a lot like Vision before. She kind of got snapped out of it by Vision when he did the the mind thing or whatever. But he was still talking to the camera. Now, I know he walked off the set when he realized, why am I talking to you? And then he walked off. But why was he being interviewed in the first place? Is that just to show that no matter how far they go in the hex, they're still in the hex, so the show still applies to them? Well, I think it's they were playing with the format of the mockumentary style of Modern Family and stuff like that. But it also seemed like those might not have necessarily actually been taking place, but it was more like we're seeing the inner thoughts of these characters. Because if you'll notice, Vision was supposed to be in the truck with Darcy the whole time. Then he gives this little interview where he's like, wait, what am I doing? Why don't I just fly out of here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and But then he's back in the truck and does fly out of there. So it seems like that little interview somehow took place in between when they were on the road like it, it it seems more like they were using it as a mechanism just to portray the inner thoughts of the characters and not necessarily they were real interviews because the whole thing with wanda pointing out like you're not supposed to talk is obviously a joke about how the people filming mockumentaries almost never talk to the subjects mm-hmm. but it also it also seemed like she was talking directly to a voice in her head that was telling her, you deserve this because of the things you've done. Is it, yeah. is, does it matter at all that the voice that talked to her was a male voice? Do you think that was just a red herring because it wasn't Agnes? Or do you think yeah. it might be revealed that, to be somebody? If it had been Catherine Hahn's voice, it would have been too obvious. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do think that that was just a random thing. And it also... It, it made me laugh a little bit because it reminded me of that final season of The Office when the the people making the documentary start to become part of the story and you actually hear them talk randomly. Mm -hmm. And it, it like, it was jarring on that show. So it's jarring here as well. 
But uh, I just I love how the front of the house this week looked almost perfectly like the modern family house. Yeah, so that was what I was wondering, too. Obviously, we've seen the footage from this episode and teasers and whatnot for a few weeks now. It obviously hinted at Modern Family you know, being the theme for one of these episodes from the early 2010s. So it was 95, uh, 95% Modern Family. I, I've seen enough Modern Family to know, though, that the intro to this episode was not Modern Family. If anything, it sounded like a parody of The Office. It was, absolutely. Okay. That was, like... The tune was almost the same as The Office, yeah, just yeah, yeah. composed slightly differently. Because you could kind of hear that same dun 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 in the mm-hmm. background, even though it was slightly sounded different. Um, but I like how they did that because it was they were never going to have as many characters as Modern Family has. Yeah. So it was smart of them to be like, "Oh, this is just referencing all the mockumentary shows that you've watched." Yeah, that was so. my, that's what I was wondering, because it seemed like the intro was Office, but everything else was Modern Family. Like, it would have been cool, I don't know if it was you, Chris, or you, Phil, or maybe it was even Jeff, um, if they did, I think, we, I think we joked a couple of weeks ago, if they did an Office, like, one of these episodes with the people that Vision works with, I think that would have been amazing, but obviously that wasn't meant to be, I guess. Oh, also the plot of this episode was absolutely another classic sitcom plot. The mom is worn out and decides to just stop being a mom for a day. And then you see how how lost everybody is without her. Like, I've literally been trying to remember where it was so I could find it. But I swear to God, there's an episode of Modern Family where Julie Bowen's character actually, like, gives up for a day. And is just in a robe the whole episode. And people are like, "Uh, when's dinner? She's like, whenever you make it. Yeah. (laughs) so yeah i love that (laughs) they keep finding ways to make these things both references and important to the plot was this it for the sitcoms or do you think we're gonna get more in episode eight and nine feels like that part of the show might be done i don't know yeah i think so especially in the wanda's and uh you know the uh the spell or whatever of agatha so that would seem to be the case um sorry go ahead chris do you guys know when they filmed this originally? I don't. Yeah, I heard Evan Peters like, filmed this for like a year and a half ago, so I don't know. See, that's what I was curious about, because she's like, I'm going to take a quarantine-style staycation. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. is that a, I'm like, is that a reference to everything? Like, <laughs> was, And then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, wasn't this made before COVID? Like, how the fuck is that a joke in this show? Yeah. It, Threw me for a loop, and I almost wonder if they did like a pickup, and we're like, you know what, we're gonna throw in this line because we think it's funny. But um, I was yeah. trying to focus; I couldn't notice uh, there was a missing child thing on the milk carton. Yeah, what was that about? Like, I don't know. Did it look like any like either of the kids to you guys? I couldn't really see it that clearly, and even when I paused it, the focus was off. Yeah, well, the missing kids thing has been they mentioned a that. Thing. Yeah. It's been mentioned more than once on the show, um, mm-hmm. and I mean, of course, you know, it's a it's a witch, and you know, witches and kids are always kind of a tricky relationship. We already know, so <laughs> we already know there's going to be some weird stuff going on with kids and you know the twins. So it has to be connected in some way. I thought the kids were doing that for a second, but obviously it was just her losing control because that was happening before the kids went over to Agatha's house. So the kids were still in the house, so it's not like it was either of her sons. It was just, I, I I would have to go back and look at it, but it was probably some random kid if I had to take a guess. Probably. I was trying to, fo- I was like, is that Billy or Tommy? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it looked like the kid had longer hair than the one, but shorter hair than the other, so I didn't think it was either of them. But apparently some of the marketing for the next Spider-Man movie has included a bunch of posters of missing kids. So some people think it ties to that. I don't know. I heard that. Yeah. I don't think so, but you never, you never know. You never know. They've taken characters for WandaVision from, you know, they've taken Wanda and vision, but uh, Randall Park's character, Jimmy Woo is from Ant-Man and Darcy's from Thor and uh, Monica's from Captain Marvel. So there is literally, there, there's no limit to what type of tie in they could do with stuff going forward. Oh, yeah, for sure. And another thing, too, you mentioned with the kids, when they were at Agatha's house, um, they mentioned how quiet she was on the inside. Is that supposed to be, was that just kind of foreshadowing what we were about to say 
Because what well, that was from the kid that could read her thoughts, I think. Yeah. yeah, as soon as he said that, I was just like, huh, he can hear all these other people who are being controlled <laughs> except him. It's obvious that that's important. and Plus, the way she looked at him was like she wasn't breaking character. She wasn't confused. She was thinking. And it's like, okay, well, she's she, something's happening with her. And we've all known that since the beginning. But yeah. um, sometimes I have to remember that these shows are made for both the casual fan and the hardcore fan and everybody in between. Mm -hmm. So them laying in all the references to Agatha Harkness, I think was never meant to throw us off her trail. It was just more meant to let the casual fans know something was going on. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I thought they were leaning into it so hard that it was going to be a swerve and mm -hmm. it was going to be something. Else. And then what ended up being that I'm like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. It's just, you know, these shows have to appeal to everybody. It can't just be the people who know these characters because the, uh, the reveal of I'm Agatha Harkness, like a, a solid 50% of the people watching the show probably have no clue who that character is. <laughs> right. So, but that's yeah. cool because now everybody's going to be like, who's Agatha Harkness? And they're going to go look up her stuff and maybe some people will read some of those comics. So it's it's cool how they will, you know, pique people's interest with that but um before i forget to mention it when they went down into her basement there there were some kind of like yellowish gold symbols on the ceiling did you see those i didn't catch that i, I was, yeah i caught that and of course like the grimoire or the i'm guessing it's the dark hold that's sitting on I'm the table thinking it's got to be the dark hold um but yeah uh yeah, I mean, all the way at the beginning of the episode, my nerd brain immediately was like, okay, uh, Agnes is the bad guy because she came in wearing purple. Purple <laughs> is always a signal that that's the bad guy. And so when it was revealed, I was like, yep, purple. <laughs> Never <laughs> failed. <laughs> oh, also, so with the dark holes, um, that, Graham, I don't know if you know anything about that. The Darkhold is like a crazy magical book that was made in the Dark Dimension, which they obviously talked about in Doctor Strange a lot. Oh, okay. So I see the book, and I'm thinking, I mean, I know it's not, but like the first thing that made me think of was like the uh, the witch's spell book from Hocus Pocus. I'm like, what is that? It's got to be like some witch thing or whatever. Um, so that would make sense. So they've used the dark hold in other Marvel stuff before. And that's, what's funny about this is it was in agents of shield for like an entire season. Mm -hmm. And then I get, but it didn't look like that. It, it was a much bigger book. It actually said dark hold on the front, but <laughs> then it was actually used in that show, the runaways. And it was used somehow to like cross that show over with cloak and dagger. So, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be them being like, oh, those other things aren't canon, this is the Darkhold, and you don't have to worry about the other stuff, or if it's supposed to be the same book we saw, because there's rumors floating around right now that Clark Gregg is coming back to the MCU as Coulson again. Are there rumors about that? I haven't heard about that. Yeah, it just started like a day ago. A couple of these supposed YouTube scoopsters think that uh, they have sources saying that Clark Gregg and Chloe Bennett, who played Daisy and Quake on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, will be coming to the MCU as part of the Secret Invasion show, which is weird because if they, if they start to count Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as canon, then Coulson's dead, and that's a life model decoy robot guy walking around as Coulson. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd be down if, for a Coulson return. I think that'd be great, personally. But, like, if they don't go that route, and they're like, oh, these are just different versions of those same characters, it it just, like, I don't know. It it basically says all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't important, it doesn't matter, and that would bother me. But, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. It, it's such a weird thing with that show, because after a while, the show stopped worrying about whether or not it connected to the movies very much. And so it would be hard for them in some ways to reconnect it because I think there are characters that they used on that show that they're planning on 
putting in the movies later and as different versions. Mm -hmm. So it would just screw a whole bunch of things up. Maybe this is more multiverse stuff and maybe a different version of Daisy and Coulson will pop over. Maybe at this point, that's what you could just say. If you recast anyone, you could just say, oh, it's the multiverse. That can really just be the excuse for everything at this point if you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different directions they can go. I haven't heard that rumor, but there's a lot of different rumors of where they might go with it. Do you think they might have done the Agatha reveal here to kind of go back to what you just said before, Chris, about how people now not really knowing if they're a cat? I mean, I'm listen, I'm a casual fan too, but I'd heard enough about Agatha before the show where I thought it was cool that they did the reveal here, even though I think it was you, Phil, when we talked about this a week or two ago. Yeah, it was last week. When they, like, they had her wearing the witch costume in the car when Vision confronted her, we're like, I mean, that's got to be just a red herring. There's no way that it can be that obvious. <laughs> and then it was. I was like, oh, okay. And it was cool. Um, but do you think they did that so people go out to go check out who Agatha is, go out of their way to check out who she is, familiarize themselves with that character? Because she is so closely associated with Mephisto, so it's a bigger deal if and when he might show up on the show in the next two episodes? Yeah, I don't. I, I definitely think she's working with somebody. I don't think she's doing this alone. Um could I mean she keeps mentioning this Ralph I don't know if that's just to keep the husband joke going yeah um but I gotta think that it has to be somebody else she's working with why is she so con- why is she so concerned with the multiverse and the nexus stuff and what now what does that have to do with her that's, uh that's the million dollar question <laughs> I don't know <laughs> um to, uh, of course I think part of it is the kids because that has been like her focus since the very beginning like every time she comes on like she's in some way focused on these kids what about you Chris? Oh, uh, yeah go ahead sorry something phil said just jagged my memory of something i wanted to talk to you guys about mm-hmm. uh the episode when she first had the babies and agnes comes in and mm-hmm. offers to take them away there's a split second where she's like spraying perfume around and they look at her funny, and she's like, oh, it's lavender. It's good for whatever. Yeah. And it's like, that should have been a huge clue right there. It's like, lavender is a shade of purple, and Agatha's oh. always associated with purple. That would make sense. But it just, all these minor little things start to come back to you about previous episodes. But with <laughs> this one, um, before we see Wanda walk down to the basement, did you notice the bug crawling on the window? Yeah, what was the significance of that? Well, that was a cicada, and I don't know if it's necessarily supposed to be that breed, but there's a breed of cicada called Masked Devil. Mm -hmm. And so, is that a reference to Mephisto hiding himself? I don't know, but it seems like it had some significance that they just glossed over at first. Do you think, well... I don't know if Mephisto's already around. Do you think she might be working to bring him into this universe and that she's already opened up the multiverse, which is how she got that Pietro in the first place? I don't know. I also was thinking maybe that Pietro is her changing the way that that beekeeper dude looks. Like, what if she's been keeping that beekeeper dude from, like, what was it, the first or second episode? That we never see again. Yeah, yeah She's keeping that dude hostage, and then she's like, now I have a use for you. I'm going to make you look like her her dead brother and send you over there to do my bidding. I don't know. That, that would tie up that loose end, so that would make sense. At least they would explain where he finally went after not seeing him for six or seven episodes, so I'd be down for that. I was just trying to think of a reason that they wouldn't establish what happened to him, and then I thought about it. I was like, maybe he's still in the town the whole time and Agnes has been keeping him hostage for some nefarious purpose and yeah. that's a good purpose right there. I, it's It's been long enough to the point now where they probably expect some of us to forget what happened to him just because I mean I guess casual fans because Marvel fans never forget anything. I mean if it's something like The Engineer or something like that they're hoping it'll be tied up eventually and I, I think it will. Um, and I know we already talked about the, we already talked about the Nexus stuff but I thought the style of the commercial itself 
kind of just uh, from that time period of like early 2000s, I thought that was perfect too because that screamed like a commercial that you would say um, in 2010, yes. 2011. Or like one of those, I mean, like they still do these commercials today. I see them during fucking watching Raw all the time. Like the tobacco commercials, like, oh, don't, is it smoking? Or like those creepy ass commercials and they have like high school what? kids in them. You know what I'm talking Pharmac- about? Pharmaceutical commercials are everywhere, especially if you watch... Uh, game shows because game shows are advertised at an older crowd. Yeah, so you see a lot of stuff for like you know blood pressure medication or whatever. But they did a great job mimicking how stupid those commercials are, where they're showing somebody going from feeling depressed to happy. Meanwhile, the voice in the background is listing off a bunch of side effects that are way worse. Than anything <laughs> the medicine claims to cure. One of the side effects being, what was it like? It's confronting uh, your feelings or something like but that. Like, and then the last one was just like more depression. <laughs> 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 that just made me laugh so hard. That that commercial, and I know, I'm, I, I don't know if we picked up on this before, but it's been the same woman in every commercial, right? It's the same guy too. Okay. Yeah. Well, the woman yeah. actually, that's what I, I was going to actually say was the same guy. I didn't think it was the same woman, but is it the same woman too? Well, that's definitely the same woman from the paper towel commercial, but the older commercials when she was done up to kind of look like Lucille Ball, it's it's really hard for me to tell if it's that actress or not. It probably yeah. is. I mean, if they've been using the guy for every commercial, they probably are using the same woman. There's no significance there, right? It's not like those... It's not like they're hinting at those being the parents, right, of Wanda and, and uh, Pietro? No. It, it, somebody threw that theory out, but I don't think so. It, I think it's just somebody from the town, is my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Any, um, are you sorry, go ahead, Phil. I, I don't know, I but you, there's so much stuff that, you know, is, has been, you know, speculated, and this episode has kind of been like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I I don't think we're going to see anything with like parents with Wanda for a while, especially with the thought of Magneto eventually being in this universe. Um, so I don't think we're going to see like their like Sokovian parents. I don't really think we need to either. Like, you know, the com, the comics and the movies have done enough to separate themselves at this point where not having Magneto as Wanda and Pietro's father isn't going to be a huge deal, especially if they go the route that I that I had heard rumored, which is they want to take the setting of Magneto's childhood out of World War II and move it forward so they can cast a slightly younger actor. And they were going to move it to the civil rights movement, and they were thinking about casting Morgan Freeman as Magneto. Not Morgan Freeman. Who was it? Was it Denzel Washington? I don't know. They had rumored somebody as like in talks with Marvel for a major character, and that's where the speculation was, was that it was going to be a civil rights movement story instead of a Holocaust story, and we were going to have two black actors playing Xavier and Magneto instead of two white actors. Interesting. Hey, Morgan Freeman in the MCU would be fucking awesome, so... I'll take it. I think it might. I think I'm wrong. I think it was Denzel, which I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Denzel. I feel like I hear a rumor every week of someone being rumored for like fucking. Um, sure. Who was? Who was? Uh, oh my god, uh, Keanu Reeves, like months ago. I don't know if that was something. Was that already confirmed or? I don't know. Well, Kevin Feige literally said in an interview, like we call Keanu Reeves twice a year. Like <laughs> That's we, we we want him for something, and eventually it'll work out. But nothing, we haven't been able to find something, and he's still busy with the John Wick stuff for a little while. Yeah, the five so, five comes out this year, next year. I don't know one of the two. Uh, I have no idea. Well, wait, wouldn't no, it be four, 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 not five. I'm sorry, they came out with. I'm thinking of the Matrix Five, maybe. I don't know. He's coming out with two movies. I thought this year, one Matrix, one John Wick. Yeah, I think it'll be, yeah, it's four for John Wick, but I do think they have five planned already. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I I think they had agreed to do two more and then end it, which, I mean, that guy, he's, it's not long until he's 60. Really? I didn't know that. Holy shit. Yeah, Keanu's, I mean, if you think back to, like, Bill and Ted, that was the 80s. I mean, he's been around for a while. I guess so. He keeps himself in great shape because you would never know that he's, what is he, 58 or something right now? Um, 
let's see here. He was born in 64, so he's 56. <laughs> oh, my God. He'll, he'll wow. be 57 in September. And what's funny is if you watch John Wick 1 and John Wick 3, they're supposed to take place like a month and a half apart, but he has clearly aged between those movies. <laughs> well, when did John Wick 1 come out? I saw the third one um, in 2019. When did the first one come out? Early 2000s? Uh, mid, late 2000s? Well, the first one was only like four or five years ago. They they haven't... Oh, I'm thinking of The Matrix. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Okay. Matrix was like 99, I think. Yeah, that was a, that was a while back. Um, then, well, obviously, I know they were rumoring Christian Bale, and now he's going to be the big bad for Thor 4, for Love and Thunder. So I feel like where there's smoke, there's fire. They wouldn't rumor these people. Like, these, these reports are clearly coming from somewhere. Like, the Captain America stuff, I know he denied it. I mean, we see that shit all the time. I feel like he's definitely going to be involved. I, I feel like... If, if stuff is being rumored enough, as long as it's a credible source and it's not someone writing on their blog like, oh, so-and-so is coming back, like, they're not, um, I feel like there's there's got to be some credence to some of these reports, including that one. Yeah, I mean, if Keanu ends up in the MCU, I don't think he's going to be playing Nova or anybody who's got to be active in fighting. I feel like they'll have him play some sort of wise elder type character who who trains somebody else. Like he would be along the lines of Tilda Swinton's character and Dr. Strange for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, um, well that, that role, but I was thinking like, um, Jeff Goldblum in, in, um, in Ragnarok where, I mean, he actually might be brought back, but like, he was like a pretty decently sized character in that movie, but it would be like a one shot thing where that's all he does. Like, I don't know if he'd be back for another movie. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like if you get Keanu Reeves, you got to do something important with him. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a throwaway role. Um, I mean, then again, they did have Brad Pitt make a 10-second cameo in Deadpool, so I know that's a little different, but I guess we'll see. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up to you guys before we wind it down here, I saw this on Twitter. I don't know if there's any significance to this, but obviously we were talking about the Nexus commercial thing, and someone had pointed out that um, Nexus was discussed on... I forgot his name, but the professor's uh, whiteboard or his chalkboard in Thor: The Dark World, um, when he was like writing down all the like he was talking about the nine realms and how they connected and whatever, and he cited the Nexus as the reason for why they're all connected. And then also in Age of Ultron, I guess Tony goes to the Nexus Internet Hub. It's called the Nexus right. Internet Hub. So, is there a connection there? Do you guys think, or is that just purely coincidental? I mean, it, it just matches the term nexus. Nexus is just sort of like supposed to be the point where all things meet. That's just seems like a term that they threw. Like in Thor, they might not have been thinking this far ahead. So no, they just yeah. threw, it, threw it as a random science word. But it feels more important now with that whole commercial focusing on it. Yeah. yeah I, I definitely immediately thought of the scene from Age of Ultron. When they when I first heard them say Nexus, I thought of the Internet Hub. Um, <laughs> you got to watch the movie. I mean, it's it's required viewing. Um, yeah, it's yeah. There's been uh, more than one winks to Age of Ultron in this thing, and I mean, of course, I mean that's basically our first introduction of Wanda and Pietro. Yep. So it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wonder: Are we ever going to see MCU MCU Pietro again? Um, I I. I I wouldn't believe that they would just bring in this other Pietro as a nod to that character, and then we just never see the actual Pietro again. I think for a quick scene, we will. I think um, they showed in the recap for one of the episodes, maybe it was last week, no, two weeks ago, it was two weeks ago, when they showed Aaron Taylor Johnson's Pietro dying in Ultron. And they wouldn't show, I know they showed that in the recap to, you know, signify that the Pietro we're seeing now isn't the same one. Like, I realize that, but I, I don't know. She's They've brought him up enough. Like, the kids mentioned... Did the kids mention him here, or did they mention Vision? They mentioned someone at the beginning of this episode, someone dying. Probably, they, I think it was Vision. Um, but obviously, Monica referenced Pietro, Aaron Taylor Johnson's Pietro, to Wanda at the beginning of the show. So maybe for, like, just a quick, like, afterlife-esque scene where she finally gets closure because I feel like she never really got closure because she never actually saw him die, right? Like, she just saw his dead body in Ultron. Um, well, yeah, she just sensed him dying, of course, because she has, uh, she's a telepath. Um, so she just knew he died. Um, 
which I, that is still I know people trash Age of Ultron, but the way all of that is filmed and when Pietro dies and it goes to like that muted audio and like she destroys all of the Ultron drones in in the room she's in and it cuts back later to her like completely annihilating Ultron and ripping his heart out. <laughs> like all <laughs> that stuff is so well shot to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're right. I've always loved that scene where where she silently screams over her like that was a beautifully filmed shot. Yeah, I just I don't know. I feel like they got to bring him back. Um, I just feel like she never really got closure, and they brought him up enough where I feel like it would be a missed opportunity if they don't. And if they don't do it now, I'm not really sure when else she would. Um, maybe just maybe just to hammer home the point that you can't bring back you can't bring people back from the dead, whether it be Vision or her brother, regardless of whether he was recasted or not. I don't know, but yeah, I just I I, I think that movie is definitely. Uh, you got to watch it, and I'm still, I don't know if I'm holding out hope. I, I like the Ultron character. I like James Spader's portrayal of the character as far as the voice is concerned. Um, I think if we heard the voice even more so than the character itself, I would pop big. I think that'd be fucking cool. But, you know, as we kind of said at the beginning of this review, to kind of go full circle here, as you said, Chris, with like people theorizing and stuff like that, there's so many theories, because you have the source material with the comics and the movies, and there's been so many movies. There's so many things they can do where there's so many theories out there, and then it's like, you know, it's like we're speculating who's going to be number 30 in the Royal Rumble, and then out comes, like, Dolph Ziggler. Like, I hope that's not what they do, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I really hope they give us some shocker, and I think they will. We still have yet to see the big Luke skywalker S cameo. I'll keep going back to that. We didn't see it on this episode. We thought we might get the Engineer. Didn't get Reed Richards. We didn't get anyone. We just got some random characters, so... We got two episodes to go, and I think we're going to get some pretty major developments in both of those episodes. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I do think the sitcom format thing is dead now. Unfortunately, um, well, I mean, what else could you do? I mean, they did two thousand, so I'm not really sure what more you could do. Yeah, and what I'm really curious about is like when they showed Hayward for like a few seconds mm-hmm. at wherever they were setting up their new base outside the hex. He said we launch today. Yeah, they never referenced that again. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, so like it seems like they're planning on trying to get in as well. Obviously, uh, Monica was able to do it, but she's changed in some way. So I don't know if like I almost get the feeling like he's possibly working with Agnes or Agatha or whatever. Like maybe he's being manipulated somehow too. Maybe Very when I possible. when I heard that I'm thinking that he's not going to just go into Westview. He's just going to blow the whole thing up. Like he doesn't care. Like he just at this point you just got to get rid of the hex. So if it means blowing up this entire town of people, that's what they'll do. But maybe not because I feel like they already tried going in, and he's like, "Oh, that didn't work. So let's just kill it. Let's just kill the whole thing. Let's kill Wanda and everything she controls." That's that's the feeling that I got from what he said. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's always the. Uh government agencies go to just nuke it <laughs> so um i wouldn't be surprised but yeah i mean every everything since hayward kind of threw that low blow at monica i'm like yeah yeah he'll turn confirmed he's totally <laughs> yeah he's the doing, business yet <laughs> he's totally doing dirty stuff that we don't know about so when we found out about the uh vision thing this episode i was like yeah Kind of figured Hayward was up to something. Yeah, yeah, that was another thing. I forgot to mention that, too, that they confirmed that he was uh, not trying to get him offline, but back online so they can use him as a weapon. So do you think there's anything more to that, guys, or is that just kind of is what it is? Well, you know, they're going to do the government agency thing and be like, he's he's not a person, he's a, he's a thing, and so we're going to co-op and control him or whatever, but... The vision we've been seeing for the last six, seven episodes is so much different just in in the way he acts than what we've seen in any of the movies he's been in. Yeah, I love it. I I can't help but wonder, like, like, what's different about him? Obviously, he doesn't have the Infinity Stone anymore, and what we're seeing is an illusion, but he's clearly got powers somehow, so... I'm still just thrown for a loop on what's going on with Vision. Like, is it Simon Williams? Is it 
is it that she's actually able to resurrect him just within that little sphere that she has control of? I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of ways they could go. I just hope that at the end of it, I, I kind of don't want to see this. Like, I know I speculated at the beginning, and I think, Phil, you had said this too, that this show is going to end with her having to deal with the grief of losing him. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've enjoyed his portrayal so much that I don't want to see him go. Like, I want him to survive the show and find the way for them to resurrect his character. If it's this vision, I think so. Because I, I just, I don't know, any other iteration of vision, whether it be in... Civil War or Ultron or Infinity War. Just, I don't know, he just bored me, but I think he's really um, the resurgence of the character, so to speak. It's like you give a, a wrestler a new gimmick or some shit, and it just, it's, it's putting a new, a literal new coat of paint on the guy, and he's just, uh, he's been great, and I, I've really enjoyed him on the show. And wouldn't it be weird, though, if this entire show deals with, I mean, it's so obvious that they're doing it in the fucking commercials now. They're dealing with Wanda's depression and her grief. Wouldn't it be weird if they wrapped up the show with her just dealing with more grief, with more grief that he's actually dead? Like I, that, that seems a little dark. Well, I I think she has never accepted it. I don't think she's accepted it yet. Okay. And I that's why I really believe he's dead. I mean, go back to Age of Ultron. That is a vision <laughs> line from Age of Ultron. Is you know something isn't beautiful because it lasts. And, you know, I think this whole thing is to get us to care about Vision just for them to snatch it away. I really do feel like that. And I, I kind of want to be wrong about that, but it's just so many hints that make me believe he's really dead. And I, whatever is going on with him, like whoever is like in control right now, I don't know, man. It, it just seems like there's something else going on with him that it's not just, oh, Vision is back. It seems like there's got to be like a catch to it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was going to ask, Phil, I'm not a too knowledgeable on Agatha's character. Where are her powers derived from in the comics? Is she a mutant, usually, or is she something else? Uh, she is a witch. She is a straight-up magic user. So it's it's not like Wanda, where in the comics she's supposed to be a mutant, and that's where her powers are derived from? Right. And, I mean, Wanda's technically not a mutant in the comics anymore. Um, well, yeah, I know they've changed her stuff around so much, but... But, yeah, like, she's... Agatha's not a mutant. Okay. I'm just curious, like, is are they going to try and say that all her magic just comes from the Dark Hold or the Dark Dimension, or are they going to somehow tie her magic into one of the Infinity Stones as well? Because none of them are purple, so... I don't know. Wait, none of the Infinity Stones are purple? The, the Power Wait. Stone is purple. Oh, yeah, the Power Stone is purple. <laughs> well, shit. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think we're going to see the Infinity Stones again. No, I think that's done, yeah. I, I, I think they are taking that off the off the table for a long time. Um, but, yeah, I just... I think she's a magic user. I think the Dark Hole being on the table, or even if it's not the Dark Hole, it's some kind of grimoire. So it's. I think it's all just she's just a magic user, and I mean she basically said that you're not the only magic girl in town. Yeah, it's um, weird that she's like we've established how powerful Wanda is, and the fact that Agatha can control her. I mean, shit, she's got to be now one of the most powerful magic users. Like, I wonder if Doctor Strange is even aware of her existence, and maybe that's how they bring it in. Is she? He's been keeping tabs on her or something? Who knows? Yeah, but see, we don't know what she did yet. Like, I assume she did something to influence Wanda, but I don't get the feeling she's been controlling Wanda all along. Like, I think some people think her saying it was, you know, doing the Agnes, it was Agnes all along, gives Wanda an out. I still think Wanda is responsible for a lot of things that happened. I think Agnes was just enabling her. Yeah. But it seemed like at the end, when Wanda's eyes and we see all that little purple smoke around, it seems like that was them saying Agnes took over. Yeah, I don't, but yeah, that's why I'm wondering what is it that she did to her in that moment? Um, yeah. Because, I mean, if it's just, you know, controlling somebody's mind, like, Wanda's a telepath, like, that's, she can get out of that. She's, <laughs> that's not gonna, right. that's not gonna work on her long term. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm almost hoping that the kids end up being, like, the the ones who save her. 
just because yeah, they've already that. established they've already established that their powers are coming in, and we saw him have quite the psychic little episode about his father being in trouble. So maybe his powers in that area supersede his mother's, but she has more like tangible powers. Yeah. Man, you talk about characters I got attached to. I'm definitely attached to the kids. I'm a big Young Avengers fan. So I'm going to be really sad when they're gone at the end of the series. And I really feel like they're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. They're they're probably going to come back in some way later. But I think they're going to be gone. And probably come back as teenagers. Yeah, I don't know. These, These two young actors they got have done a great job. I almost hope they decide to just keep them around for a while. Yeah, I would like that too. Um, but I just, I don't, I just don't think the ending of this is that Wanda gets to keep everything. I definitely think there are going to be consequences. Oh, for sure. But she obviously has one person on her side, and Monica, who you know, she still thinks Wanda is not a lost cause. So if Monica ends up getting put in charge of Sword at the end of all this, if Hayward's found out to be a bad guy and everybody seems to love Monica, it it would make sense that she would help Wanda cover some things up or maybe smooth things over with the government and on some level, or at least try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, Agatha or whatever else is going on there is going to give her an out. So she's going to end up vindicated in some way because everybody doesn't know everything she's doing. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I've i thought for a while that she's not... Whatever is going on with the kids, I don't think that's Wanda. That's totally Agatha. Um, whatever else, there's other weird stuff going on in the town that I don't think it, all of it is Wanda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I feel like the ending of the show is either going to be really cool or just really dark or both. I mean, between Vision probably being killed off, we're not going to see the kids again. Sparky isn't coming back. I mean, Hayward's an asshole. <laughs> I feel like this whole show, the whole show, is getting darker and darker. So, well, I mean, you guys said to kind of a quick question for you guys. You said uh, that the kids might be the one to kind of come in and make the uh, baby face save, so to speak. Do you think it's going to be them? I mean, obviously, Vision and Darcy are still in the hex too. Maybe a. Uh, Maybe a tag team effort. Could there be anyone else that could possibly make the save at this point? I mean, Vision, if he's only being sustained by somebody's magic, it seems like he would be pretty easy for them to sort of take out. Like, if it's if it's Agnes who's keeping him alive, then she can just shut him down. If it's Wanda, maybe she'll have some control over him if she's able to control Wanda. Mm. But... Darcy still being there is a good point. Like, you know, her character is funny, but they could always have her end up being the one who saves the day at the end. I don't know. There's so many different ways they can go, and we're still waiting on this supposed Luke Skywalker cameo moment, so... (laughs) I'm... Uh. I'm going to be disappointed if it's just Doctor Strange because we've, we've all been expecting him for so long, but... You can't be. I I refuse to believe that. It won't surprise me if that's what it is, and Elizabeth Olsen just exaggerated how important it was. Yeah, I, I don't know. If I just feel like the more it, the more you know, the closer we get to it, the more disappointed I'll be. Because, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised to see him, but I'll be more disappointed because I feel like people were speculating that before, like literally, like a year or two ago when the show was announced, and like. Why Why would Kevin Feige even say when they announced Doctor Strange 2 two years ago that Wanda, like the show that would it would carry into the movie? Like if, if it wasn't announced as being that, I think it would have been a cooler surprise. Honestly, I wish Kevin Feige never even said that. I wish they just said, oh, the movie's coming up, blah, blah, blah. It's going to feature other characters. The fact they said Wanda was going to be a part of it, it just gives away that he's probably going to tie into the show somehow. Like we've said before, Wong showing up would be cool in like a post-credit thing, or um, who was the main villain from Doctor Strange that you guys mentioned last time? I, not the main villain, but the guy that stayed Mordo. alive. Mordo. Mordo, yeah, 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 yeah. So him showing up would be cool. That's not Luke Skywalker-esque, but... I don't know. I guess we'll see. All, hopefully she wasn't exaggerating, and it is something pretty cool. But hey, uh, Paul Bettany had said, remember, that it was someone that he's always wanted to work with. So 
unless he's always really, really just been dying to work with Benedict Cumberbatch and he didn't really get the chance in the other movies, then I, I don't know. I don't know what it could be referencing, so I'm not sure. Yeah, unless unless Agatha is working with Mordo, that's the only thing I can they, see. They, that, that's possible. I feel like this this whole show with the stuff they've been doing with the magic and shit, working with Mordo again, great swerve. I don't know if that's the Luke Skywalker thing, but I think that'd be actually really cool now that you mentioned that, Phil. Yo, all right, I just had an idea. Mm-hmm. This is going to sound crazy, but <laughs> what if it's Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider? Oh my god. So hear me out. He he might be one of the few like mystical characters who wouldn't be affected by her. And he's got a lot of history with the dark hold like in Agents of Shield, he's the one who has to take the dark hold back to the dark dimension. Mhm. I honestly like I'd be I do not like those Ghost Rider movies with Nicolas Cage very much, but I would be stoked if Nicolas Cage showed up in the MCU. <laughs> would that would be a hell of a game, yeah. <laughs> I, just because I like Ghost Rider as a character, I would love to see Ghost Rider. I don't know if I want to see Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider, <laughs> but <laughs> I would like to see Ghost Rider. Uh, I don't, the guy there who played S.H.I.E.L.D. was supposed to get a show on Hulu, and that fell through, and then yeah. it was sad because he was a good... I liked his portrayal of the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider. Yeah. There, there are bits and pieces of that first Ghost Rider movie I liked, but that second one, nope. No bueno. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. That second one was horrible. And, like, their portrayal of Mephisto was just terrible. Wait, Mephisto's in the second movie? The, the devil is supposed to be Mephisto. Like... They actually name him as Mephisto at some point, but in those movies, he's just the devil. He's not, like, one of many. So they sort of just decided, like, oh, instead of naming him Satan, we're just going to use the term Mephisto because comic fans will think that's cool. Well, well, isn't Blackheart Mephisto's son and Blackheart's the villain in the first movie? And then he's back in the second movie. <laughs> he just He's played by a different actor. Well, the Mephisto, anyway. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Those Ghost Rider movies are, like, so very loosely based on the source material that, like, the only similarities come down to his powers at some point. But yeah, I, I just think Nicolas Cage showing up would be, uh, like, so shocking and funny. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. That would be a great cameo. Listen, I know people give Nicolas Cage shit, but Nicolas Cage, when he wants to, is a great actor. He's, and he's but, a massive star. Like, regardless of, you know, what anybody and, might think of him, he's, he's a huge star. Him showing up on his show would be a big yeah. deal. And he's a huge comic book nerd, too. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he is. His, his he name is based off of action. Yeah. Oh, no, that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. Is it, wait, who is it based off of? Luke Cage. Luke Cage, that's right, because his, ne- his name is technically Nicholas Coppola, because oh, he's wow. Francis Ford Coppola's nephew, I think. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he he's a great actor when he wants to be. It's just he made so many bad movies to recoup his fortune that his manager screwed him out of <laughs> that people started to like wrongly label him as just an over-the-top B actor. But you go back and watch some of his older work where he was like getting nominated for Oscars and stuff. He's great. So if he cares about the project, which if it's a comic book property, he will. Because he's the kind of guy who, he literally owns a copy of Action Comics number one that he paid like a million dollars for at an auction. He's wow. he's, he's that kind of comic nerd. And it, it, would, it would just be awesome to see him show up. I'd laugh so hard. He's been in two uh, comic franchises so far. Uh, we we got real close to uh, Nick Cage Superman. So <laughs> <laughs> that the whole saga behind that is crazy. I can't wait for that documentary, man. Uh, we're going way off script, but I can't wait for that <laughs> documentary. I want to see that so bad just to laugh at it. That that's the one that Kevin Smith was supposed to write, right? Yes. So. I, he told a story about that on one of like he's done a bunch of those three hour symposium type talks where it's like half stand up comedy, half just him telling stories. He told a story about one of the producers from the studio, like a big name, 
might have even been one of the Weinsteins, actually. Oh, God. But he had said, like, yeah, his big edict when I was writing the script was in the third act, Superman has to fight a giant spider. Yeah, and, oh that, my and he's God. like, and that's when I knew that this was never going to work. <laughs> the giant and the giant spider got repurposed and used for Wild Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Wonder the whole uh, Graham. If you don't know anything about that, you got to look that up. Of of the time Nicolas Cage almost played Superman, and then didn't they have him voice Superman in one of the Teen Titan movies as like a joke? Yeah, I think it was, uh, yeah, one of the more, I think it was Teen Titans Go to the Movies, because uh, I didn't see the movie, but I saw the end credit scene, so, uh, yeah, I think they did, actually. Yeah, it, it, he would have been such an odd choice for Superman. <laughs> like, even <laughs> if you're going, even if you go Kingdom Come Superman and give him the long hair and make him all depressed, Nicolas Cage is just not Superman. No. No matter how buff he gets, like, that just would have been such a weird choice. But I almost wish that movie existed somewhere because it'd be hilarious. <laughs> the screenshots I've seen of him, you know, testing the costumes are phenomenal. And I just, <laughs> I wish this movie existed. Yeah, there is, there's so many, like, what ifs with superhero movies over the years that, I mean, they were. Did you ever see that first Fantastic Four movie they made? Not the one with Jessica Alba, but like the really low budget one that a studio literally made for the sole purpose of maintaining the rights to the franchise. Dude, you talk about the Roger Corman one? Like the really shitty special effects one? Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I know like the basis of how it was made and all that other stuff. It's it's so bad. <laughs> Like it, it's one of those movies that if it if it was ever released, it would have been on Mystery Science Theater three thousand getting made fun of. <laughs> so bad, and I love that like it's out there for people to see somewhere. Like you can find it on the internet if you want to watch it, and like it makes TV special effects from that era look good. That's how bad it was. Mm-hmm. It was made for nothing. <laughs> Well, now I need to see Nick Cage in the MCU. I mean, you guys just got me excited about something that's probably not going to happen. But, I mean, hey, if he has time in between filming National Treasure 3 and the new uh, Tiger King movie, then I don't see why not. I mean, give the guy an extra paycheck. Hey, that's, that's the thing, though. National Treasure, is that not a Disney franchise? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, once you're in the door with Disney, it seems like those other franchises become open to you because... Look at Ming-Na Wen. She jumped from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to The Mandalorian. I mean, there's mm-hmm. we're going to see more of these types of crossovers just because so many actors have been in both. I love that there's some, there's some list out there of all the British actors who ever appeared in Game of Thrones and Harry Potter, and the list is massive. Wow. And, like, it just shows that... The acting world, even though there's hundreds, maybe thousands of actors working at any given time, it is kind of a small world. And you start to see these crossovers with people jumping from franchise to franchise, like we saw with Michael Keaton. You know, he goes from Batman to playing Vulture. Mm -hmm. So so I don't doubt that Nicolas Cage will be in the MCU at some point. (laughs) If not, if not, he'll be in the DCU. Like, yeah, if you're an actor of any prominence, you're probably going to be in one of those eventually. Like that's just how it is nowadays. They're they're money machines. Nicolas Cage loves making money. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. I thought you were almost hinting at a National Treasure MCU crossover. That's what I thought you were going to say. God no. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is National Treasure three going to be the uh, the secret plot of uh, episode nine of Wandavision? I mean, hey, I I would love to see that. <laughs> I'd love those movies, but you know what? Happen. As long as National Treasure never does anything with aliens, at least they'll have that over Indiana Jones. Oh, I was gonna say taking a shot at Indiana Jones. Hey, they're making the fifth one. I I don't know if I'm excited to see it after that last oh, one. Boy. Oh boy! And Harrison Ford's like eighty years old. Yeah, just just let it die. Come on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we don't need more Indiana Jones. Like, just let it be what it is. Who asked for this? Who asked for Indiana Jones five? Honestly, yeah. If, I don't. I when don't you know. when you mentioned uh, Harry Potter, if we don't see Daniel Radcliffe as a prominent magic user in some comic movie at some point, then we've then Hollywood has just failed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, any of those actors, really. Emma Watson? Like, how is she not in one of these movies yet? I think she will be. She was, um, isn't she doing Cruella de Vil or whatever? Wasn't she cast for that movie on Disney Plus? That, Did you guys hear about that? Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Oh, yeah, Emma, Emma Stone's okay. playing Cruella, which, uh, that trailer is, like, whoever made that trailer was on something. And there. I love that everybody immediately started being like, oh, so this is Disney's Harley Quinn. Got it. Uh, like, the parallels in the trailer were just so obvious from the start. And do we need Cruella DeVille's origin story? Can't she just be a crazy lady who wanted to make a coat out of puppies? <laughs> yeah. Do we need another uh, Maleficent like origin story where it's revealed like she's the good guy? Like, I don't know if, I mean, listen, I love the original movies, but I don't need to see a... Cruella DeVille movie played by Emma Emma Stone. No, Hollywood did not learn its lesson with Han Solo. We don't need to know <laughs> where everybody came from. Yeah. No, I thought um What was that? We just don't. Like yeah. it's just unnecessary. Who played Cruella DeVille in the original 101 Dalmatians movie? The live action. It was it's a, like a very prominent actress. I forgot Glenn her name. Glenn Close. Yeah, 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 Glenn Close. I thought she did an amazing job. I love her as a, that that's how I know her. It's from those movies. So. Yeah, and and Nova Prime. Yeah, is that the? Uh, is that the... she was in Gardens? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. I was. I, uh, I thought you were talking about Nova Corps. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, I thought you were talking about the guy who played the guy in that movie, who was um, wasn't he Reed oh, Richards in the Fantastic? John C. Film? You talking about John C. Riley? No, no, not 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 John C. Riley. Um. <laughs> He was the main male lead, I think, in 101 Dalmatians. Maybe 102 Dalmatians. I don't know. Oh, he, yeah, yeah. You're right. He is uh, Reed Richards in the Tim Story Fantastic. Yeah, movies. yeah. Okay, that's what oh, I thought. Oh, shit. See, I never saw the live action 101 Dalmatians. Like, yeah. I think I saw the cartoon when I was a kid, but. Well, it might be the, the sequel. I don't know if it's the first little, one. I don't know. It, oh. it may not be 101 Dalmatians. Like, I think they, they, made a one, they made a second one called 102 Dalmatians. And then I think he was in that one. He, I don't know if he was in the first one, but. Yeah, I thought I him and... I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was Reed Richards. And like, wait, was not the same guy? And he was also in San Andreas with The Rock, too. <laughs> he's, he's been in a number of stuff. But, um, yeah. So Dude, they're, making, they're making a sequel to San Andreas. So I don't fucking... Why? I, I, I don't know, dude. They had, the, they had the, the, another earthquake. Another one, I guess. Uh, I literally could not tell you a single character's name from the first movie. <laughs> I couldn't uh, tell you their names, but I've seen the movie like ten times. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. It's not a great movie, but it's so that, unrealistic. That's the thing with those disaster movies. Like, can you can any of you tell me what John Cusack's name was in two thousand twelve? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, you never know like the characters' no. names. Or or Jake Gyllenhaal in The Day After Tomorrow. Yeah, it doesn't man. matter. We're there to watch <laughs> the disaster, not the actors. <laughs> I can tell you where it took place. I can't tell you who what. A single name of one of the characters was though. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. At some point, we're just gonna get every actor who reaches any level of fame above, you know, <laughs> the movie actor. They're gonna end up in one of these things. It's gonna be one of it's those. Just, yeah, yeah. It, it's gonna be like that. Uh, like that Oprah meme. Oh, you're in the MCU. You're in the MCU. You're all in the MCU. At some point, everyone's gonna be in the MCU. So it's just too bad, Arya Stark didn't get a good comic book movie because oof, I knew mutants was rough. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I guess I shouldn't have. Right. I yeah. mean, honest, honestly, there's a demon bear in the movie. Like that alone is worth watching it just to laugh at that. Yeah, like the comic then the, the demon bear is like the new mutants, like bad guy and like their original run. Right. Yeah. But I just love how throughout the movie they keep, citing the proverb that they're saying wrong by the way <laughs> <laughs> the proverb about the two bears there's wow. like oh there's there's two bears inside you which one survives the one that you feed the proverb is about wolves mm -hmm. for one they set up the bear thing a million times and then at the end of the movie we get a literal giant bear it's just like <laughs> it's so stupid yeah that movie had so many fucking problems that 
I'm not surprised it took this long to get it out and that they released it without any kind of fanfare because it was just not good. <laughs> yeah. The accents were terrible. The kid who's supposed to sound like he's from Georgia, I mean, that was bad. Like, that's mm-hmm. almost got to be offensive to people from the South because he sounds horrible. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, di- I didn't see it, but I know it came out last summer, and it's probably better that it did, just because it came out at a time that no one was going to see movies anyway. So, like, they can make the excuse, oh, it, it didn't do well because, you know, theaters weren't open, so that's why no one saw it. Now, no one was going to see it anyway. It looked like it sucked, so they probably did themselves a favor with that. But uh, I think it's on Hulu now, because it's never going to be on Disney+, Plus. but... No. Is that Hulu, you said? <laughs> Hey, Disney. They, they threw it on Hulu, yeah. Oh, interesting. They, they have the last Fantastic Four movie on Disney Plus. So they do. Anything is possible. <laughs> they have um, they have the first That's Fantastic true. Four movie too. Not not the terrible special effects one that you guys mentioned, but uh, the other one that we were just talking about, the newer one from like two, with Jessica Alba. Then that one's on there. Yeah, the five one. Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. have Silver Surfer on there, but they do have the first one. I think. Pretty sure. They've been slowly adding the Fox Marvel movies over time. Most of the X Men movies are on there now. I saw the that, Deadpool yeah. movies ended up on Hulu because there are. Yeah. So but, uh, I mean, X Men's pretty dark, and they're on there. So I don't know. Like, yeah, could, could they put the Deadpool ones Logan. on there at some point? Lo- Logan, Other than yeah. Logan, none of them had an R rating. Oh no! Really? The X Men movies? No, none of them. Not oh. even X Two, which. X2 got kind of violent at times, but it was never super gory or bloody. Hmm. So, like, it's still, you know, it kind of had that PG-13 line that they were treading. But, yeah, all the X-Men movies were PG-13, I believe, hmm. except for Logan and Deadpool, which those are on Hulu, I, I think. I don't think Logan's on Disney+, Plus, is it? No, uh, no, uh, no. You There are a couple of X-Men movies on there. Um, yeah, most yeah, of them now, Logan. like, the 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 newer quadrilogy or whatever, like up through Dark Phoenix, is all on there. I think. Um, not all of them. I looked the other day because I saw someone talking about it. I know the first X Men is on there. X Two is X Men Three is not. Um, Wolverine is. Dark Phoenix isn't. I'm just going off my memory. I know Days of Future Past. I think I saw is. Um, They're in no hurry to get X Three out there, huh? No, I don't, why is that? Is it, it was it not a good movie or something? Oh, it's terrible! I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> the Last Stand? No, I didn't see that one. The first three X Men movies have such a weird path because, like, the first one was pretty good, and mm-hmm. then the second one was really good, and then the third one was just bad. Mm-hmm. And if you go if you go look at some of these terrible comic book movies, they all have one person in common. Yeah. His name is Simon Kinberg. Oh, really? He's the guy who wrote the newest Fantastic Four movie that sucked. He's the guy who wrote and directed Dark Phoenix that sucked. And he's the (laughs) guy who wrote the original X3, I believe. Anytime he's just a producer, the movie's great. Like Deadpool, Logan, he was producer on those. They Mm -hmm. were fine. Anytime he's allowed to write the movies or direct them, they're garbage. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, he was pretty much brought in to rewrite X3, if I remember correctly, because that was the one where Brian Singer took time off to go direct Superman Returns, and then they were just not patient enough to wait for him to come back, and so that's where Kinberg wrote it, and then he had uh, Brett Ratner come in to direct it. Ugh, that, uh, that Superman movie probably wasn't worth leaving for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably was, and I mean, well, I mean, he came back and redeemed himself with the uh, Days of Future Past, at least. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we know. I mean, we won't be seeing Brian Singer for a while. That's for sure. Well, yeah, loosely redeemed himself. I'm sorry, C- redeemed himself creatively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those Me Too allegations aren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, the X-Men have had such an up and down journey with their movies that at this point, I think there's probably more like mediocre to bad ones than there are good ones. Yeah, unfortunately so. That I mean, again, I haven't seen every movie from start to finish, but 
That's if I get, that's the general gist that I get from the X Men universe, which is hopefully why hopefully they're better off just rebooting the whole thing or in- incorporating certain good elements from those movies in the MCU moving forward. Yeah, well, I, I kind of hope they do a TV show in, as opposed to a movie. I think X Men works better as a TV franchise. I agree because one of the things the movies never got right was showing the X-Men going on an adventure as a cohesive team. Yeah. Like, you see it for a split second at the beginning of Dark Phoenix, but then after that, it just devolves into shit. Um, a, a TV show on Disney Plus would be a great way to introduce them, or at least introduce them in a movie and then continue the story, because I, I do feel like serialized storytelling is probably better for the X-Men overall, just because there's so many characters they need to service that Having yeah. multiple episodes that can focus on different characters is going to be more satisfying than having a movie where Storm, one of the best X Men of all time, is barely used. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I, wa- I liked Gifted. I don't know if you guys watched that show, but I, no, I that's why it. I liked Gifted. Yeah, I watched The Gifted. Um, it was good. I liked most of the actors in it. I just felt like. Fox never took it all that seriously, so the budget never got where it needed to be. Where is that air? Yeah. Is that on uh, on a certain platform like Hulu or something, or now? I bet it's on Hulu now because it was a Fox TV show, oh, okay. and like all of that stuff from Fox and FX is on Hulu now, pretty much. Hmm. Yeah, it's on Hulu. I think. Well, at least it was on Hulu when it aired. Um, I don't know if it's still there. Hmm. I think I actually saw it the other day when I was scrolling through Hulu looking for something new to watch. Yeah. Because I, I actually never finished the second season now that I think about it, and I thought about going back and finishing it. But Yeah, I, um, mean, I think it's a good that, show. That actress who played Polaris, it'd be awesome if they used her in the MCU in some way. That would be great. I agree. <laughs> As we wind down here, guys, any final thoughts on... Uh... This episode of WandaVision, I think we hit pretty much everything and then some. Uh, I'm just curious to see where this is going because it's just like every time they answer questions, there's more questions afterward. <laughs> I feel like when it come the final episode, it's going to end and we're still going to be left with a lot of questions unanswered. So I, I won't be disappointed that that happens. What about you, yeah. Chris? Any, any final thoughts? Uh, Just that you know, the people who were spoiling the show at two thirty in the morning are dicks, and <laughs> <laughs> that's the big takeaway this week. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see what happens with this. And even though we have no confirmation that the next two episodes will be any longer than the others, I, I would like them to be longer because it feels like they still have a lot of heavy lifting to do to finish the story and set up whatever comes next. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like maybe hour long for the last two would be appropriate or something. I don't know. I think so. I think it could be like a fun. I think that this next episode could be like the season finale, but like break it up into two parts. And that's what episodes eight and nine are going to be. That's my prediction where it's going to be like we get we get most of the resolution the next episode and we get the rest of it and the episode after that. And they're around an hour long. I, I think one of these episodes was like 45 minutes, wasn't it? Like a couple of weeks ago. Um, on a very special episode, that was two weeks ago, episode five was 42 minutes, which wasn't that much longer than this one, which was 38, but yeah, I, th- I think they'll be closer to an hour for the next two, because I think there's still a lot of questions still to be answered, and yeah, they pack in a lot of stuff into 38 minutes, but I think making it a little bit longer, no one would complain just because the show's so good, but uh, yeah, looking forward to breaking it down next week, it should be great as we inch closer towards the season finale, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming out. I think in a month, actually, from from today. I think it comes out March 19th. Um, I know the season finale of this show is in two weeks. There's a week off, and then it's Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So there's a shit ton of stuff to look forward to, and I'm excited. But, uh, Chris, people can follow you on the Twitter machine at BR underscore Dr. Phil, you at PhilDL616 on the Twitter machine. Uh, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate the time as always. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me.